Okay, so this is Mark meets Tom Evans, the ECD at Being London. Hi Tom. Hi. Um, can you give us a quick summary of your career to date? A quick summary, okay. Um, so I, I'm um, a graphic designer, I suppose, I started off as. I um, wanted to be a graphic designer since I was a, a tiddler um, and did a, a degree in graphic and media design at London College of Printing. And then, what um, year was this roughly? This is, um, I graduated in 98 and whilst I was at university the internet happened. Before I went to university there wasn't any internet and then when I left there was. So it was an interesting time to be at college and um, I was lucky enough to do an internship at one of the, the first sort of digital shops in um, the UK and Europe I guess so, and it was called AMX Digital by a very famous, founded by a very famous graphic designer called Malcolm Garrett, who designed all the sort of Duran Duran covers and stuff in the 80s, Buzzcocks, things like that. So he he would he turned his back on print and embraced this new digital technology and it was all very exciting. Um, so I, we, it was very much design getting to digital first. Um, and so my, my passion was design and interaction. Um, and after AMX, um, I set up an agency called Mook in about ooh, very late 99, early 2000. And... Um, with a bunch of people that I'd met at Hemex and other agencies. And, um, and then I ran that um, for quite a while, you know, six, seven, eight years, um, and sold that to a, a, a micro network called Nitro, um, and worked on some, some integrated advertising work for sort of um, Nike and Volvo and things like that. Um, and then um, Sapient bought Nitro to form Sapient Nitro. So I kind of had three jobs, um, or three job, uh, three business cards, and, and with the same job really. And after that? And after that, I went to um, Jack Wills and Auburn and Wills. So I was brand communications director, um, and looking after those two brands on the board of Jack Wills, um, and I was responsible for all the communications and social and um, uh, kind of some of the install stuff. And the, the street teams and all that kind of thing for Jack Wills and Auburn and Wills. And then after that, um, I came back to agency side, um, and I'm now executive creative director of Being, which is a kind of um, where technology and business and creativity sort of combine to make innovation and product and service design. Not bad for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a random question here for you. How would you design a spice rack? For a blind person. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I'm trying to not make any blind jokes, but uh, do you know what I would do? I, I think lots of people bang on about co-creation and, and all that kind of stuff, but I think that's probably a prime example where you probably start by looking at what how a blind a blind person uses a current spice rack, and um, just through a series of kind of I don't know interviews and, and, and talking to them. Um, you would try and give them what they need and what, what was the most usable, I guess. That would be my approach. Okay. Human, human-centred, out. How do you, so, your first job in the industry... Do I actually have to tell you what the solution is? No, you don't have to give me a... You don't have to give me a, uh, <laughs> you don't have to give me a product yeah, name or, or uh, <laughs> visuals or anything. It wouldn't really matter what it looked like, would it? Just a lot of smell involved, I suppose. If you could work at any agency in the world, apart from being, which would it be? Um, oh, that's, oh, that's toughy. I, I do like um, people like IDEO and Frog. I do like those guys. I, I, I'm a big fan of design and product design, and, and those guys are at the sort of, you know, the sharp end of innovation and the sort of physical design that you can hold. I was not like that kind of thing. Okay. Which superpower would you like to have and why? Um, superpower. I don't know why. The first one that springs to mind is invisibility, but it's not actually that useful, really. Unless you're a spy. What if you could switch it on and off? Like, yeah, so yeah. You would, you would need to, to that would be a, more of a hindrance. Otherwise you'd just be the, the invisible man. I suppose flying would be good. Be quite, you know, nice way to get about. For you, what's the best thing about agency life? 
Um, culture, I would say. The best thing about agency life is the sort of camaraderie and the sort of, you know, the way that it galvanises people into, you know, um, all mucking in to get stuff done. And it's fun. And it's fun working on creative challenges, uh, very, a wide variety of different creative, creative challenges every day. Um, it never gets, never gets done. And for you, what would you say the main differences are between working in-house at somewhere like Jack Wills and then working agency side? Well, what I found the difference was that uh, at, at agency side, um, sorry, client side, usually what the business makes is something different than what you do as a creative person or a communications person. Whereas in an agency, what you make is the product. Um, and so the whole business is arranged around making communications or making products or making services or creating design. Whereas, um, you know, in a client side, the business sells dog food or makes trainers or, you know, um, the, the product isn't communication. So it's, it's, um, it's you're almost uh, a, a peripheral to what the business is there to do. Whereas in an agency, you're right at the heart of it, which um, is, is better actually for, for a creative person. There's a perception that client side or in-house um, is more corporate and it has a different culture what are your thoughts on that from your experience? Yeah, I think it's it's probably slightly less fun. It's a bit. It's certainly for. It's certainly more um, money orientated and more process orientated. Um, yeah, it's kind of true. Okay. Um, who inspires you? Who inspires me? Um, this is a bit of a cliche, but I think Johnny Ive is just awesome, and um, you know, it's it's. It's very hard to have a conversation about design or communications or brand without mentioning the A word yeah. and, and the you know the jobs thing. Um, but yeah, Johnny Ive has you know a, a huge role to play in the success of that brand because the products are just iconic and, and so that to get to that simplicity, I think, is really admirable in, in terms of design and stuff. Simple is the hardest thing to do, and he's, they've done it um, in abundance. When you're not working. What do you do in your free time? I um, don't do that much, really. I, I kind of I, I hang out with my kids. I drink. I watch TV. I look on Twitter, um, and then I can come back to work again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, what does someone have to do to creatively impress you? Um, How can they stand out and be remembered? I really like people that can um, that are good at articulating why what they've done is good. <laughs> I think that's really key. Um, I like I like a strong visual sensibility. So you know you, you can I think you can polish a turd in some in some respects. If something is presented really well and it's got a really cohesive narrative around it, um, it's it's very easy to decide whether you like it or not. Sometimes if something's badly presented, you're trying to work out whether there's a nugget of something good in there or not, um, or whether it's just a dog's dinner. So, um, and I think that the level of expectation of, of people, in, you know, in general now is that stuff looks good, you know, and stuff is well presented and stories are well told. So, as a, as a creative person, I think you owe it to yourself to be unique and, and polished and, and clever in the way that you tell the story about yourself. In the current economic climate, with things not looking so good, have you ever had the threat of redundancy before? Well, personally. Personally, yeah. Um, no, I've had far worse than that. I, um, when when we in the early days of MOOC, it was the, the dot com, um, you know, the bubble had burst and yep. it was recession and it was foot and mouth disease and nine eleven happened. Deep end was going bust and you know we hadn't paid ourselves for months, so we were we were worse than unemployed. We weren't even going to be made redundant. We were you know back to go bankrupt. Luckily we scraped through, but it's, you know when you run a small business like that, you're never more than a few months away from bankruptcy anyway because you know you're 20 people in a warehouse in Shoreditch trying to make ends meet doing cool stuff. So <laughs> yeah. it's a very different way of surviving than in a bigger agency or a network even. So is that because back then clients were were less. Not as many of them were on retainers, and it was more on a project by project basis. Um, I think that's probably true of, of design anyway, and digital anyway. Um, it's, it's mostly the advertising boys that get the chunky retainers, um, and, and, and at the time it was more about our size really than anything. We were we were um, you know a boutique agency, so um, 
yeah, um, but it's 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 nice to be on a retainer. Yeah, it's, it works for everybody. Uh, and what's been your favourite account to work on over the years? Um, it was it was very enjoyable to work on Nike um, because it's such an iconic brand and because you get to go to Hilversum and their headquarters and because they're such amazing um, marketeers and, and very relaxed people that really get brand on the whole um, and all the, all the amazing iconic work they've done before you even get to work on it is um, tremendous. On the other hand, it's like, you know, how can, how can you make a difference on a brand like that? So how can you better it each time? Yeah, exactly. Right. So sometimes it's nice to work on a brand that no one's ever heard of or to, to, that you can actually build or grow or redefine almost. So, um, But personally, I, I the, now, uh, you know, at this stage in my career, it, it it, for me, it's more about um, the stuff that I can do that makes people's lives better, if you know what I mean, rather than the sort of making a, an ad that will get my name in lights. I'm, I'm more about tools and products and services that, you know, the man in the street might find useful or valuable to, to their lives um, rather than making, you know, a YouTube hit or something. So, so something that's going to last longer as opposed to a three-month kind of lifespan. Yeah, exactly. Less about less campaigny and more kind of, you know, long term products and platforms and things that people engage with for the longer term. Okay, let's move on to a quick fire round. Oh, that was pretty quick fire already. Is this well, even that was, quicker? That was eleven and a half of, 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 of talking. This is quick fire one word answers. Okay, one word only. One word only. F W A or N M A? Uh, F W A. Fruit or veg? Can lion or DNA D pencil? Pencil, a long way. Cats or dogs? Mm, neither. <laughs> Art directors or copywriters? Um, creatives. <laughs> Safe answer. Apple or Android? Uh, Apple, at the moment. Degree or no degree? Um, University of Life. <laughs> and or deck? Uh, or. Retained work or pitch work? Uh, retained is much easier. Pitch work's probably better quality. So one word answer. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Web or mobile? Um, Multi-platform. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Independent, did you say? Yeah. Or, or networks. Um, uh, I don't know. Both, you know. <laughs> Outsource production or on site production? Um, on site prototyping, outsource production. <laughs> cool. And lastly, twist or stick? Always twist. Brilliant. Thank you.